Welcome to Soul Bar, a subset of Soul Spy University and essentially the lounge for metaphysicians. Here at Soul Bar, we are teachers and students on the spiritual journey. Some of us are, but not limited to psychologists, astrologists, psychics, life coaches, tarot card readers, and much more. And here is where we get to congregate, relax, have a soul teeny and or a sober teeny. Um, but most of us all take a break for some fun on our spiritual journeys. My soul felt it would be healing for some to partake in the journey of embracing where our humanity and spirituality meets with fun, light, laughter, humor, and love. My disclaimer is for any existing or aspiring clients, this is not what you get in the session from me, where that is more of a Holy Spirit or higher self divine wisdom coming through. This is break time for us all, since none of us can be in that all the time as of yet via Holy Spirit, higher self, ego list. We're going to take this rare opportunity to embrace the music called life that happens between our human selves and our higher selves as we relax, reflect, learn, and enjoy the journey. It is my hope that you guys have fun, find relief, and realize we are all imperfectly magical, no matter where you are in life, as we help to take a break and break the third wall and expose the fun behind the scenes. On today's episode of What the Did We Sign Up For?, just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Today's topics will default to astrology, current energies, twin flames, a course of miracles, and more. If anything comes up for anyone dur during, that supersedes the agenda that I put out. Um, this is just in case we're going to just flow with it the first time. Okay. So, hey, guys, and welcome to our first soul bar. <laughs> Um, Thank you so much, Christina. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to be here. I have to get my sober teeny. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, I also, Caroline, I want to fill you in. I was apologizing to them prior um, that I've, I'm learning how to use a blow dryer, and it's quite a journey. So I look like an electrocuted poodle right now, but they made me feel much better about it. So I'm just going to have to- Oh, I love it. it. Love it. Your it hair is gorgeous. It's you look gorgeous. very pretty. Um, I need one of those. <laughs> I um, need my hair to be. <laughs> I got the, the spaceship of blow dryers on Black Friday called Shark. And I'm now just getting around to using it. But this took hours and it took like 40 things that I can't. I don't know. But anyway, I want to get a current energy check in if that's okay with you guys. Sony happens to be an expert on this. I love her Instagram. Um, if you want me to promote Sony, I will. But how do you think the energies are doing this week in February of 2024? They suck. They, they suck. are. Horrible. They are horrible. horrible. How are we all still alive? Really? Really? It, it, it has been so bad for um, just about everybody uh, that I am, my clients that I'm seeing. I, I just, if it can go wrong, it, it's going wrong. <laughs> exactly. It's I'm not you. It's not, it's not your personal horoscope. And, you know, one of the things that, uh, the astrologers and the numerologists uh, that I follow have said it, it, it's going to be because there's it's going to be everything's going to be accelerated and you know you're, you usually you know karma is people think of as negativity but it's not it's just we reap what we sow. You know, so your good deeds and the things that, that you've sown in the past, you're going to get those rewards back pretty quickly now. But it also means that <laughs> you better be careful what you're saying, because whatever you're saying and then putting into action, you're going to get that back right away, not two years from now or 10 years from now. And so those, th those that are depressed and, and having a lot of problems who are not willing to accept responsibility for themselves, they're going to be having a hard time. Those that are on spiritual paths and wanting to progress, the universe is going to start uh, bringing that energy into it. So if you're on a spiritual journey, you're probably going to get a lot of acceleration this year. Uh, but that doesn't always come easy. 
Yeah. Yeah, it definitely doesn't. So it should be. I'm curious about something. Does anybody know anything about numerology? We've got so many two, two, twos going on. What's going on with all these two, two, twos? Well, yeah. I have to look it up because I don't remember every one. Well, I'm a 22-4, so, you know, two, twos are uh, about uh, relationships. It's about uh, cooperation. Yeah, cooperation, uh, helping each other, partnerships, relationships. Uh, so th those are going to get a lot of, of, of stress. Uh, creative numerology, I think, is one of the best sites up there. Uh, Christine. What is it, Sony? Christine mm -hmm. Dularay, uh, Creative Numerology. She, okay. She puts out a free newsletter every week. You go in there and you find out what path you're working. Okay, this is a three year for me. Last year was a two year. So, and, and I'm a double two. So uh, it was a lot to do with relationships for me last year. So wow. this year it's more about stability. But right at the beginning of her website, she shows you how to get the number, the year that you're working. And it goes for, from uh, one to nine. And then you sign up for her newsletter. And at the beginning of the month, she gives you, you know, what you'll be working on for, for that, uh, the entire month. And then it changes what day it goes out, depending on the year. But it, uh, then once a week, she sends you for your number. Let's say you're, Catherine, let's say you're working a four. I'm working a three year. Uh, you'll, you'll get a news, you'll get a newsletter and it's going to, you can go and scroll down and see what's happening uh, for for threes or fours, whatever your number is. And so if you keep that in mind, uh, it, it can be very helpful uh, on the decisions uh, that you make during that week. It's, it's I had her do my chart uh, and I know how good she is because as old as I am, we've got a lot of bad stuff going on. And there's three phases in all of our lives. And I'm in the last phase at my age. It's a um, cycle. Yeah. The last cycle. Yeah, I'm in the last of, of the three cycles. So when she did my chart, and I think it was something like 34 pages that she sent to me. Holy smoly. Yeah. And really, really good stuff. And so I know she was right on the the rest of the year because the things that she said said for the last other two sections which was something like 70 years uh she was on spot with that those things happened in the times that the, the chart you know said they would i'm sure she you know runs that off of a computer program and then goes back and tweaks it you know just like you do with an astrology part really fantastic stuff um and she's very um very, very free in giving this stuff out. And I actually had a uh, chart made for my, my newest grand, my grandson, great grandson, uh, which I got a kick out of. And I sent it to his father, his grandfather, uh, my son. And I said, I think you better read this so you know what you're getting into. Because that kid's going to be hell on wheels. <laughs> so. I don't know why he'd have those genes, but uh, that would be nice little. It's a nice little gift to give uh, to a parent. It is, yeah, yeah. yeah to know it what is to expect. A nice gift. To know what to expect. Great. Christina, yeah. is there is there God in your wine? Um, I believe so tonight because okay. this week this week needed this so bad. I, <laughs> I needed some Holy Spirit in me this week. Every day, all day. You know, we were having everything. We were having a discussion one night, and I got his. Christina comes out with these wonderful, beautiful statements without even realizing it in a very innocent way. And we were talking about. I think the lesson that day was God is in everything, and that was the the lesson in a course in miracles. And Christina says, oh, "Do you mean I'm drinking God in my coffee?" Yeah. How did you say it, Christina? Was so. Well, cute. what happened was everybody started getting on Bob. And being like, yeah, Bob, and like asking questions. And then I was like, yeah, like I, I was like chiming in, like, um, like, uh, 
I just want to know if I'm drinking God right now. <laughs> In my coffee. Is this, is this Bob Monday night or Bob Tuesday night? Monday. Monday oh. night. Yeah. It was Monday night. And it was just so funny the way she came out with it. But then we were talking about how we're supposed to be able to substitute the word love for God. And so that means love is in your cup. So you're drinking love. I better be. <laughs> I'm drinking love. I'm drinking love. God, I'm drinking love and mine is mine. What is are you up. having? What are you having, That's Sony? Actually, I am having weak decaffeinated tea uh, because my blood pressure is trying to kill me. And uh, alcohol increases your 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 blood pressure. So oh, okay. I'm being good. Yeah. Well, you and I will both be with our, what did you call them? Sober teenies? Sober teenies. Sober I teenies. Like that. I like that idea. Well, guess what? You guys are going to like my next idea. So on a meeting the other night, um, I'm trying to remember if any of you were there, but they mentioned that A Course in Miracles, if you follow it, um, you'll actually get younger physically. <laughs> so, yeah. That's with any truth. That's with any truth teaching. Yeah. So guess what, guys? Mm -hmm. Guess what I'm going to do? And you guys are going to thank me for this. Okay. We're all going to do this together. ACIM, A Course in Miracles, skincare line. Huh. Fate forgiveness face cream. <laughs> Holy, Holy Spirit serum. <laughs> spiritual exfoliant. And uh if if the spiritual exfoliant hurts, that means that you're you didn't wash off your ego. Thank God for the Holy Spirit face wipes to wash off your ego. Is your mind always going? It has to be. <laughs> by the way fyi i sold skin uh skin care now you got acim skin in, uh, in that's a great idea in the uh department stores and i was a jaffa re representative so now, i used to buy makeup and the whole thing the holy spirit has i think that's actually a great idea a great idea i really do i think that's i don't so know if you can use a course of miracle skin care I don't know either, but I don't think it's really uh, But uh, vitamin E capsules every night. I don't. I'm 81 years old, and I don't have. I have lines here, but I don't have any lines here or anything. And that's all I've ever put on my face. Nice vitamin E. Huh? Vitamin E or D? Right, but it has to be the real vitamin E, not the synthetic. Because in the hospitals, we use um, vitamin E for uh, burn patients because it keeps you from making scar tissue. Oh, wow. Yeah. And that's why I started doing it 50, 50 years ago. And I'm sure that that's the reason that, that I don't have, um, in, in, you know, for an 81 year old woman, you know, usually you have a few more lines than I do. Oh, you look amazing. Um, yeah, you do look amazing. Yeah, you don't even need the skincare line, but you know how in A Course in Miracles, you have to give your mouth to God, your eyes to God. So it's seeing the truth eye cream, seeing the truth eye cream, and um, God-given lips are part of my skincare line. You guys don't. You go, me. girlfriend. Is she serious? <laughs> I only speak the truth. <laughs> I think she's lost it. <laughs> oh, Yes. Oh, well, okay. I thought I, I past lost it, hence the hair. It just you know what it is? You know what it is, Sony? Oh. You have no idea. She, you know, she comes on Tuesdays, but, you know, it's a different aspect of her. So you haven't experienced her differently. Oh, <laughs> which part of her do we have now? I do parts therapy. Yeah. <laughs> so which, which part are we talking to? Okay, well, the part you usually see on Tuesdays is as if I just hatched from an egg because the, the day has beaten me up. So I'm like, it's just my pure soul there just trying to learn, you know. <laughs> Carolyn's, Carolyn's, I love you, Christina. She's easy to under the inner day. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, was, I was cracking up before looking at Carolyn crack it up. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I spoke to um, 
Catherine earlier and I told her that, uh, oh man. I oh yeah, about something. your day. <laughs> yeah, I was observing something about myself in the meeting this morning, mm. right? And it had to do with, had to do with Mark. What happened? Yeah, no, it's just, I was just telling her that how sometimes I feel like he, this is judgment. I know it's judgment. He has a lot of ego. And, but then at the same time, I was getting down on myself. I'm looking at him, but I'm the one that has the ego. Like, why did I have to say anything about um, mental equivalence and all that intellectual stuff? I didn't have to say that. You know, I just like have to be seen. Like I have to be seen. So I have, I have big ego too, a big ego too. And um, so I, I was sharing that with Catherine and saying, and I thought about it and I go, this is so silly. This is so silly. And, and I remembered to laugh. I yes. forgot to laugh. Yeah. You know? honestly, maybe you thought it would help. Sometimes I come out with things because I think they're going to help somebody. So maybe you were trying to help. Well, yeah. I mean, I did say that. It's just that the law of attraction, when we when people get into the law of attraction, see, it sounds so, wow, the law of attraction. But science of mind is all about the law of attraction. I mean, that's been out, gone, that's been out for years. Like when The Secret came out, you know, The Secret, the movie was very materialistic. Get You could get this, you could create this, you could, you know, but when you are in, the teachings of the science of mind is very, it's very different. It's, it's more down to earth, down, you know, on a, on a down to earth level. So that's why when she started mentioning uh, Esther Hicks and uh, the law of attraction, there's a lot of stuff behind it. Oh, of course. it's not just, you know, yeah. Yeah. So, I, met, I met, anyway. Esther, I met Esther Hicks. I actually manifested that whole thing. <laughs> but I, I feel like um, ACIM is my second level of awakening, you know, but my first level was learning about that. And I remember thinking, I'm going to come to this because I, 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 I got there at 6 a.m. freezing and I started crying tears of joy that there was a crowd of people. You could barely get in the parking lot to see Abraham Hicks because like more people like me, thank God, you know, because like, oh, yes, yes. I'm trying to tell my Italian family anything. It's like I might as well shoot myself. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think i think if anything you should cut yourself with a butter knife <laughs> yeah that's a better idea and um i said you know what and i just randomly was like next year i'm gonna come with a boyfriend and we're gonna have a, a room here and i'm gonna meet her and that's exactly what happened i accidentally meet like her rooms were next to each other it was amazing it was like you don't even realize um but yeah i've been always trying to integrate now that with course of miracles because i actually threw out everything i knew once i found a course of miracles i um, i can understand that i really can yeah. and by the way on next level soul i love him i fell, fell asleep to him last night yeah right yeah. next level soul he had the medium that taught esther hicks wow he's amazing he is amazing i go to sleep to ndes every night <laughs> <laughs> and I make a joke of it whenever like something goes on in my life I'm like this is why I go to sleep to NDEs every night <laughs> have you watched the other guy the other guy that kind of advocates I don't know how to say it. Jeff Mara the, who Jeff Mara the one that advocates doing ayahuasca oh I'm trying to remember his name. Uh, I might, you know, there's so many. I might even have the wrong. No, name. but he's good. He's been having really good people. You know, he even had on um, the guy from the guy that partners up with uh, Mark Anthony Lord. Uh, if his name comes to you, let me know. But I want to. Well, I'm going back to history. Okay, you guys, just so you know, A Course in Miracles, who I found like mind blowing is um, I was telling them last week, A Course in Miracles with Keith. 
I find Keith to be the Bashar of A Course in Miracles. He is just like, he's just so good. Although, I started watching him the other night. I see what you see in him. Yeah. 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 Does, Although, does he have a British accent? He's yes. got some kind of accent. I feel like it's a channeling accent. <laughs> that makes any sense. <clears throat> I can't find it. No, and I no he does have a sort of, it's oh. a British or Australian or one of those. But actually, I want to bring this up to you guys. So he actually said the other day, I'm like, this is weird. I'm not sure about this. What do you guys think of this? He said, well, you guys would know more because you guys have been in it longer than me. Um, that we came here to hide from God. <laughs> yeah. I've heard that before. Yes. Yeah. We're not so doing we feel, job. We feel guilty. We feel you know, shame, we feel. Yeah. What do you think, Sony? Oh my God, Sony, you're muted. Oh my God, you're muted. <laughs> I was wondering where you were <laughs> the whole time. Oh no, try to unmute. Is, <laughs> is Zoom being crazy? Zoom is just messing with everyone this week. No, I, I, no okay. the, phone, I, the phone rang and, and I, I okay. muted myself because I wanted to, I got some people been calling me about appointments and I thought that was somebody calling me back. As much as I love you, all money is going to come first. Uh, <laughs> you go girl. <laughs> well, you know, you got to pay for the dog food, you know, uh, on that. I, I don't believe that's the reason we came here at all. Uh, I've, I've done too much past life regression work. I've read books and books and books from therapists who have done thousands, uh, literally, of past life regressions. Mm -mm. No. Interesting. No. Uh, so what's your general, general gist of it, why we came here? Uh, because we need to, this is life school 101. We, it's the different, we, we we're here to learn the difference between power and force. And when you're on the other side, there is nothing but vibration. We're all colors. There is no body. Everything is telepathy. Uh, so th there is no individuality. Uh, and they've never had to make any choices. You are one with God when you're on the other side. Mm -hmm. You are. You, so there's no question. But we, we have to, we wanted to learn what it's like, what it feelings. You can't make choices if you don't have any, without feelings. You, you've got to have darkness in order to choose light. And, and that's basically what we're all doing here. And each one of those experiences that we have, obviously we've all, the four of us have, must have known each other in some previous lifetime. We wouldn't be doing this, mm -hmm. you know? And, and so, you know, you're a solo group and you come in and you, you like judgment is one of my big lessons to learn. And you, and, and you can find us out in your astrological uh, uh, numerology charts. It'll tell you what, what the big lessons are that you came in for this lifetime. Uh, but you need more of a, a numerology. It's, it's based a little bit differently than just the twos and nines and, and that stuff. So I came in to learn a, 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 about judgment. And so I, <laughs> I asked God to please relieve me of, of this burden of judgment. And like he always does, he just gives me more opportunity to make that choice on my own because God gave us free will. Uh, that, that's why we, you can't really do total manifesting uh, in, in that sense because... Some things are not meant for us, but th that's why I think that we're here and everything that I've, I've read is done. It. You remember the, 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 the movie, Michael? Oh, yes. yes. Oh, yes. He came back and you know, he, he, the dark angels, he came back because it's fun to be here. You know, you get to feel things. <laughs> I, I, remember he, he liked the, 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 he smelled like cinnamon cookies. Oh yeah. The cookie and you get to eat pie. I know, but that that's never turned me on with a man. But you know, apparently some women did, uh, and he loved to eat. You know, because it you can't do that on the other side. There's, you know, there's not a lot of fun on the other side. 
So but that's what we come in here for. You wouldn't get turned on if a man smelled like a, a hostess snack? I don't <laughs> No. Not many. Oh, no, I like a little good clean sweat during his meal. Yeah. Oh, well, good for you. I don't know. I don't think I'm straight. I think I just <laughs> Gray flannel. <laughs> oh, I've never heard of him. Oh, oh, well. <laughs> uh, Old Spice was nice. I liked Old Spice. When men used to wear, you know, um, colognes. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I mean, back in the day, I think they were nice. I don't know. Maybe I turned not straight or something. Because the newer, I, the newer All Spice, but the older All Spice was. No, it was strong. Deep. <laughs> not many things. I had, a, I had a boyfriend that wore a gray flannel. That was nice. And I can't. Oh, what was the one that? that God, I really. Oh, liked. I thought you meant that was the guy's name that you were trying to look up. Okay. <laughs> no. No, there was oh, there was something. That, There's no uh, age difference here. What did it? It started with an A. Uh, Amari? No. A man's a man's cologne. Yeah. Armani. No. Was it like from Avon or from like? No, 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 no. It was a hundred dollars a bottle. Um, and, and that was you know forty years ago. Um, oh wow. Uh, Aramis. Something like oh, that. Aramis. Oh, Aramis. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Oh, I'm boy, gonna, you're I'm in trouble. Like... You are in big trouble. Why? <laughs> all the gays, all the gays wore Aramis. And we <laughs> loved it. No, 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 no. They didn't back then. And I can assure you <laughs> that they didn't back then. <laughs> I'm telling you that the gays even admit that they wore Aramis. Just um, guys, don't forget we're recording. If you're gay, we love you. Sony just doesn't want to date you if you're gay. That's all. Yeah, <laughs> they, could be and they want, don't want to what, date me either. You know, I might. <laughs> I might. <laughs> oh, but hey, my 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 uh, grandson is 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 gay. Yeah. Well, there is no judgment in this group. Let's just put this no, right on. My the brother table. was gay. My brother, brother was gay. We I come out with any kind of statement. There's absolutely, absolutely nothing but love in it. There's no yeah, judgment right. here. I got a lot of gay friends. <laughs> but the ones that wore the UMS, I can tell you they were because they were in my bed. So they weren't wearing it, you know. <gasps> no, Whoa. I don't know. I don't know because you don't know that much back then. Maybe they are actually, or they are now, you know. You know how they all come out in Oprah like 50 years later? <laughs> Maybe they came out of the closet. <laughs> yeah. Carolyn, does it, take, wine? does it only take one glass of wine with you? <laughs> it's that holy wine you're drinking. No, not for God is, like, God is like, in your glass. <laughs> remember when I went, remember when I went to the 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 sanctuary? I went to the sanctuary. I hadn't been out for so long. You can't take me anywhere. <laughs> you got wasted in a sanctuary? Anything, <laughs> actually. Oh, great. <laughs> she can uh, entertain herself. You notice? Carolina can entertain <laughs> Oh, man. Oh, my God. Uh. I used so, to be really close. I see gotta, people. People just know. assume because you're older, you know, that that you didn't do any of those fun things when you were young. You know, um, yeah, that's true. It is. Oh, your I know you guys had more fun than me. I didn't have time. <laughs> My hair looks like I had fun, but no. <laughs> well, you we're in this dimension to experience everything yes well okay you want to hear about this so i used to be close with gay people as friends but here the men i'm talking the men out of nowhere would just make out with me gay men and i never knew how to feel about it like i was like oh my god i feel so flattered like he's gay and he's making out with me but then I'm like, it's mostly gay men. And now I really don't know how to feel about this. <laughs> I don't know. You know? Well, were they friendly to you or did they want to sleep with you? Well, it doesn't make sense because he's gay. They were gay. But I guess they just, I just, I think it's just the emerging of now people are attracted to each other's souls instead of bodies, maybe. 
maybe. I wouldn't push that. I wouldn't believe that one real strong. <laughs> I think that's the agenda. I do. I think I think that's like the the sole agenda. That's what I think is happening. Because otherwise, you know, my dog doesn't know what gender she is from second to second, and that's great. And maybe it's so she falls in love with another dog that doesn't know. I don't know. I don't know. Well, some people are bisexual. I used to be bi curious when trashed, like when drunk. I would be a little bi curious. Um, and that's as far as I ever went in life. <laughs> no, but I mean, I, 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 I know men that are bisexual. So they will, sleep with, they, will, they will sleep with women or men. Okay, because some people wonder if that's the thing or if it's either one way or the other, you know? Well, I know gay men are the who will no attraction for women at all. Yeah. But so Sony, huh. in in our generation, the lines were so defined. Mm. Yeah. Right? Like my brother, yeah. I was very close to my brother. And I used to say, you know, he used to say, and it's not true, <clears throat> but because he was gay, I listened to him. He said, anyone who's bisexual is really gay. That's not true. No, no. Mm -mm. No, you're not, you're not one way or the other. <clears throat> and nowadays, I mean, it, it, the lines are not defined. You know, I think there's this wonderful, wonderful generation of young souls that have come into this planet. Absolutely. That yeah. are very comfortable with who they are and they are bringing a whole new enlightenment, I think, to the planet as to, you know, let's be aware. Everything is okay. You know, it's like we're all okay. It doesn't matter, but they have, as you said, I think, um, Christina, which I think is wonderful, you know, soul awareness or soul attraction. What, what was the term soul you used? Yeah. Soul yeah, it's more, it's more like, what am I attracted to within you than what am I attracted to outside of you? You know, um, the out, the outer attraction has become secondary, I think, to the inner attraction. At least, not not with what we see commercially in the whole, in the heterosexual world. No, uh, because they're selling product. But the young people I see, like that, I get exposed to with my granddaughters and their friends, and they're so accepting. I mean, they just that just accept you. I mean, that's it. There's there's not a lot of questions. Very true. It. Yeah, and it's so beautiful. Well, I, I think that's true, but it, when you're talking uh, about whether you're heterosexual or bisexual, or you're talking also uh, about what you're sexually attracted to, mm -hmm. and, and and that makes and that makes a difference. Uh, if you if you're gay, is the way that I define the term, a gay man, uh, you you could be married. Uh, the many gay men have been married because they thought that, that they needed to be that way or they wanted children, uh, but they really aren't physically attracted to their wives, uh, cause a, a lot of, of emotional uh, problems. Uh, and they, they, it was very difficult for them. Uh, so, but a, a gay, a truly gay man in, in my definitions and mainly in psychology and stuff, uh, it is not physically attracted to, uh, in a physical sense, uh, to a female, although they have many female friends. So that's your soul attraction. But, you know, they generally don't, you know, you got to be bisexual in order to, to sleep with a, a, a female uh, if you're a gay man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of course, I have something to say about this, and it's, I have to wait until my partner walks the dog. <laughs> <laughs> well i just want to say you know when you're talking about today's people patricia robles said in some of her, her uh, vlogs she calls it a vlog that anyone older than anyone who was born after 1987 is like this new generation of souls to help the planet 
think each each generation has its you know kind of vibe but i know what you mean because i used to listen to doreen virtue and she used to talk about the uh, not doreen virtue oh my god who am i thinking of you guys know you guys know what i'm talking about she used to channel um not me yeah. huh are you talking about me's no me? no she was um god i feel like it started with a d um what she look like she had gray white hair um and okay. she had different um she would talk about the different waves that would come in um to no, no. of like star seeds or indigos to like awaken the planet and she i think she kind of mentioned extraterrestrials oh my god i can't believe i can't remember her name she's like a legend um she's Doris? Like is her name Doris? maybe uh She's like the female Bashar. <laughs> like she's so, so good. What, what, what was her, her theories? Um, that like there's different waves that are coming that came in. Like some came in, you know. Dolores Cannon. Yes, Dolores Cannon. Um, and she, yeah, there was like you know. So I don't remember the specific dates, but she would give like a good range of like the different waves of indigos that would come in. Um, she also spoke about, again, this is something I wanted to mention before, and I, it's weaving back to it now, and I have to hang on one second. I'm just going to, um, you guys talk for a sec. Either you guys talk or I can pause it. It's up to you. I just got to get this situation on, on a roll. Sure, sure. You guys, wanna, sure. you guys want me to pause it and then you talk, or do you guys want me to keep yeah, it? That would be a good idea. To pause it? Yeah, because you never know what we might say. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Yeah, it was Dolores Cannon, right? So right. what I didn't want to mention just now is she she touched on um, Twin Flames as well, which Caroline brought up last week. Um, and so what I was going to say before about Twin Flames is I didn't even know I was straight until I met my Twin Flame. Um, but I consider myself, I was telling them last week, uh, a retired Twin Flame because <coughs> even Google will tell you not <laughs> <laughs> not to mess with that it was not it was not a fun journey and actually sony what you were just saying off recording um i'm going to mention something when we're done recording as well that relates to the aftermath of twin flames but it is not a fun journey um and it was something how do you define how do you define twin flame okay so just so you know when i met mine i didn't know the term it wasn't until eight years later that i discovered the term and realized i wasn't well, I was that shit crazy because of it, but basically, um, yeah, I don't, I'm, not, I don't know exactly what it is, but I, I'm think it's like a, a soul that like splits into two, you know, that kind of thing. Um, but Dolores Cannon also covered. I wanted to mention Twin Flames. Um, Caroline, she mentioned. Uh, I, I've done a lot of work and and uh, written a bunch uh, about Twin Flames. Really. So Oh yeah, I'm up on QR. Um and mo you got you gotta define what twin flames are. Most pe what most people uh in, in my experience and all the reading and writing that, that's up on QR and the other websites uh, about twin flames, most most of those are codependent relationships. Uh, and they are, or they're so they're soulmates. What most women, when they talk about meeting my twin flame, they're talking about meeting my soulmate. Mm -hmm. The twin flames don't necessarily get together. Oh, uh, I know. Yeah, uh, you know, all these women that are, that are married and and now they, you know, found another relationship. Uh, now suddenly, the, you know, that's their twin flame and that's their justification uh, for having an affair with somebody else. Uh, so twin flames are the dark night of the soul. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. When we're off recording, I'm going to talk to you about what you were just talking about. It was the worst. One of the worst soul tearing experiences um, the only thing that compares is when I suddenly lost my mom when I was 11. But let, let me tell you, I've had a lot other experiences that were, you know, divorced, getting hit by a car, blah, blah, blah. Nothing compares to the soul tearing. 
the of. So yeah, guys, twin flames are fun. Um, don't set out to meet one unless you want to, you know, <laughs> nah, I don't know. I don't know. It did set me where I am now though. So it got me on this path. Thank God. Well, um, I thought, yeah, well, that I, sure. I, thought I met a couple too, but it is forces you to deal with your issues, your dragons. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. Totally mm -hmm. forces you to deal with your dragons. Uh, yeah. But that sometimes is a, is also a narcissistic relationship uh, if, if you have a tendency to be codependent. Uh, so, you know, a lot of that gets... A lot of that oh, gets no, trust me. Trust me, Sony. This isn't like... I know how people overuse that nowadays. Trust me. If I, if I'm, I, not, I'm not saying yours wasn't, but I'm just asking what's your definition uh, of a twin. It was, it was unlike anything I've ever experienced and I'll never experience it again. And that's it. And I'm retired and that's it. <laughs> like, like I'm not expecting you know anything from it. <laughs> you, you, you can't lose your twin flame. Um, it feels as if I have, <laughs> for sure. But you can't you lose your twin flame? Yeah, you can't lose them because they're part of you always. Yeah. Mm -hmm. can't, you can't lose your twin flame because it's it's part of you a, a true twin flame and they're few and far between yeah few and far between but it, it, is it is it an alter ego or kind of like an alter the theory ego? is that when god created the universe uh, he made vessels and, and you know our bodies are vessels think of them okay or vehicles that some of the what he was spitting out making these vessels some of them weren't quite as strong as the others so they split in half they broke apart oh okay so half of us your soul is split and you're spending all these lifetimes trying to get back your your soul so that you, you are one uh and that and that I think Homer or Plato, one of those that it can, actually it comes back from there, uh, it's, it's way way back in in in, in, uh, in history. But but that's what the myth of uh, where the twin flames comes from. So you you're trying to that's why you you once you meet them, you you're there to help each other raise your level of, of consciousness. And, and when you both become to this higher level of consciousness, then you can make ascension. But it is really rough. They accelerate letting go of the ego. That, that's part of, of what the twin flame does. Oh, wow. Yeah. And yeah. you're probably never going to totally get rid of your ego as long as you're in this dimension. It's, okay. it's needed for the for the vessel itself the, the vessel would not survive <clears throat> i wonder if my husband was a twin flame i feel like if you wonder it's just no okay <laughs> oh but i don't know we're gonna i'll ask sony more like after recording but well, what do you think sony i know what you're what you're explaining christina because i've been there yeah yeah been there yeah. and and it's I don't think that person ever leaves you. Mm -hmm. and, and you can't. And I, you know, I have someone in my life who is, I don't know if it's twin fame or an old, old soulmate. Uh, I, I know we've had many lives together, um, but it, you can't break the relationship. Mm -mm. Can't break the relationship. It never really goes away. Mm -hmm. But but it's not a sexual relationship. Not that it would be my choice, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Sorry. Let's talk about bad shit crazy. Oh, I know. Yeah. All right, bye, baby. So what's a soulmate? A um, soulmate is someone who is in your soul group. Most of us all belong in a soul group. And we keep coming back uh, in, into this dimension uh, together. And we play different roles depending on what each of us 
uh, needs to work on. And, you know, what may have been my mother in the previous lifetime could be my wife or my child in this lifetime. Because oh. what they need to work on and what I need to work on works together. Uh, so we, we play out these dramas in order to uh, learn what the Course in Miracles is talking about. Right. Uh, so you may change uh, different roles. Uh, I've, I've got many people that I, I have accessed in past lives that I have had five, six, seven lifetimes that I can access with them. Um, and yeah. any, anybody that you know who is important in your life uh, is probably uh, an old soulmate. And uh, considering your relationship with your husband, I would say uh, he definitely was an old soulmate. Um, yeah, that's what I was telling her last week. At least, yeah. 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 With the twi twin flame thing, now I could speak more freely. <laughs> um, like I had gifts that were, I was telling them last week, Sony awakened in me um, that I didn't give a shit about, <laughs> but they were out of this world. You know, like all of a sudden I'm a medical intuitive. I didn't even know what that meant, but I did. You know what I mean? And like all sorts of like things that like extremely accelerated psychic abilities that I didn't care because I was too concerned with the heartbreak of the twin flame. So I would actually go to psychics about him at the time because I never felt this way in my life. Okay. And then they would, um, they would eventually, once I, once I stopped focusing on them, they'd be like, oh, and I'm like, what thinking it's about him. And they'd be like, Oh, you're one of us. And I'm like, Oh, okay. And I had, I'd have to politely be like, anyway, cause I was so consumed with this heartbreak, you know? Um, but yeah. it, it was just, um, it, mm. it's, it's not fun. Uh, but C Carolyn, and I, I was telling them, even Google tells you, even Google's like, have fun with your twin flame, huh? No, you know, it's like, I'm, I always tell people have fun with the, like, watch out for the breakdown syndrome. I mean, symptom, you know, uh, because, oh my God, oh my God. And that's why I consider myself a retired one. But yeah, I was telling Kat, uh, Caroline, I, I definitely think your husband was at least a soulmate. Um maybe not a high frequency soulmate, but at least a soulmate. Cause as Sony was saying, anyone that's like prominent in your life is most likely, right? Sony, like from previous lives. Oh yeah. Yeah. Especially when, when you have um, issues to work through. Mm -hmm. That's what our soulmates do. They give us opportunities to make those choices, to not judge and, and, and to learn unconditional love. And, and you don't look, you know, when some, when something is easy in your life, you, you don't learn a lot from that. The, mm -hmm. the challenge is to have somebody in your life who is batshit crazy, who has issues. Uh, that, that is page 124 of D, the DSM-5 manual. Uh, that, that, that's where batshit, definition of batshit crazy is. Uh, my psychiatrist friend told me that. Mm -hmm. That's one of his terms. Uh, but they give us the opportunity uh, when they're married to somebody else or um, they have a lot of uh, affairs in their life or some, there's always an obstacle, age, uh, social status. Um, culture. Huh? That was mine. Culture. Yeah cultural stat, all these things. There's always some big thing that you have to overcome uh, in, in these relationships. And, and that's where you, you, you learn the forgiveness. It is, you, pra you have to practice forgiveness. You, you have to learn who you are. And, and that's what the Course of Miracles is trying to tell us too, is who are we? Who are we really? Most people don't have the slightest idea who they are. Uh, they're, they're what somebody told them to. They're, they're what the culture is. Uh, and, and, and that's what the twin flame forces us to do is, is to go inside of ourselves and, and find out well, what are my standards? What are my ethics? Who am I? You know, 
oh my God, yeah. Because when I met mine, wasn't my physical type whatsoever. I had a type and it was Italian and that was it. This didn't look anything, you know, I just knew like something like, anyway, um, you know what I really want to know? And if any of you come across this ever, please send it my way. Cause I can't find this for the life of me. And I could usually find anything I try to look for. I have not yet found an NDE, which talks about like if, if twin flames are always together and we all always have like a higher soul or a higher self, you know, you would think that an NDE would mention their twin flame at some point, you know, like an ND? like a near death experience. Oh, okay. You know, I have yet to hear of the twin flames in the afterlife. I, I, wait, I don't quite understand what you mean. Well, they don't just exist on earth, you know, they exist like in, you know, 5D or like, you know, when you, the, uh, what I, my concept of heaven is like, we all are already there to some degree. Like we all are like, um, have a higher self there we're, if time's an illusion we're all already there um i feel it's just a sliver of each of us that's down here right now yes yeah you you, you never the whole there's always the, the the higher self stays on the other on the other side only part of us comes down so we're always connected to god whether you know when you're down here you 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 get that connection, but our higher self is always part with God. The whole self doesn't come in. I want to interrupt this. Yeah. So, to my understanding, there is no sexual identity when we're on the other side. No, there isn't. You're right. There isn't. So there, how could there be a twin? You know. Well, because twin flames, like, um, even though him and I had a very strong attraction to each other for whatever reason, um. It doesn't like, so when I go, when I, when I pass on, I'll probably meet my mom again, but that doesn't mean I'm going to have sex with her, you know, like my mom's on the other side, you know, or the other side, you know what I mean? Like you'll, you'll meet people that you're not going to have sex with, you know, or that you don't, you know, like it's still a soul. Your twin flame says twin soul. But she won't be your mother on the other side. You will recognize her vibration mm. as is someone you know but she wouldn't be your mother part of her is already in another dimension living another life mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. she's part of your soul group yeah well, i i find that strange too because why is it when you go to a medium and the medium is describing your family on the other side their characteristics because your energy pattern never changes. It's like a fingerprint. You can recognize uh, the energy, not not the face or the things like that. And you do that when you when you do past life regression work, you you follow the energy. So when you when you're in another dimension and you know another lifetime, you what you do is you tune in to to that energy that you recognize as Carolyn or Catherine or, or Christine. And, and that might be the the guy who runs the, the, the butcher shop down on the corner. You recognize and you and so you say, you recognize that energy. Is that anybody that you recognize in this lifetime? And I'll go, yeah, th 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 that's my boss or that, that's my uncle. So we all recognize this soul uh, energy that never changes. Physically, you may in this dimension because you, we have we are males or females. You know, it, it, we could be, you know, a male or a female in, in many lifetimes. Uh, and but you'll recognize who that person is. Yes. Yeah. I, I, that's what happened with the twin and I, I was like, you know, you, you recognize, it's a soul recognition. Um, well, did you recognize that person the first time you, that, that click you have with them? Anybody that you have that, for, that click with, you know, you're comfortable with, or you decidedly don't like them. That's somebody that you've known in a, you've had a lifetime in a previous life. 
And that's what you're 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 recognizing that energy. Oh. Yeah. And there's also a theory, Caroline, that like someone's soul could always be in heaven. So like my mom's soul or your husband's soul could always be in heaven. And like I said, maybe just they put a part of themselves back down to um, reincarnate as another identity, but they still have a whole soul here, you know? So when you go up, you'll still meet your family. You know what I mean? Like, it's not like, oh no, wait a while. <laughs> they are now a cat, you know, like, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't know. That's that's my theory. I don't know. Whatever. And, and that's pretty consistent in, in, in everything that I, I've read and studied. Uh, you will recognize the people, but because we can change forms, you know, to be recognized. And that's like, you know, all these people who, who are channeling Jesus. That was an energy. That's an energy. Okay? Mm -hmm. and, and, and that that there's only you. All you can do is really channel is God. <laughs> That's the only thing you can really channel. But people don't are not comfortable with, with that concept that, that they can do that. So he comes across, you know, puts the name of Jesus or uh, any of the great, you know, archangels. Some people, are, you know, they say I'm I'm channeling the archangel this or that. Well, the archangel only know the archangel is channeling God, you know. So we we have to bring things down to what that we that we can deal with. I see. Yeah. Um, because yeah, because a lot of NDEs, you know, near death experiences, they all mention Jesus, you know. Yeah. Not all. I I have known three people who actually uh, had near death experiences. They did not never said anything about Jesus. There was a spirit there that they knew was very highly evolved. But you're only going to chant. You're only going to ch channel Jesus if you're a Christian. Mm. Mm. A Buddhist is not going to channel Jesus. No. Yeah, it's interesting because. Uh... The other day, like, I think it was like a couple, few months ago, before I even got into A Course in Miracles, my partner is very, very Catholic, and I, people can do whatever they want. I'm, I'm in love with all of it. But basically, she, he was really Catholic to the point where he was almost like, I don't know, I love everyone, you know, and he was like, acting like it's right this way, and that's it. And I was like, you know, if you were born on the other side of the world, you would have a whole other system of beliefs. So I'm always telling him, like, who are you? Are you just a bunch of programs? <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, most people to accept the religion that they're brought into. Yes. Mm. Well, you you are a, a an Episcopalian or a Buddhist or any of those because that's what your your family most of the time that's what what your family taught you. How do you feel about aliens? I've known a couple of people that have said they've seen them. And why would you? Why would we be so arrogant to believe that that mm -hmm. there are not uh, other life forms out there? Yeah, Do I you think there's alien. That? There's been aliens for hundreds and thousands of years coming to this earth. I mean, I don't. I I think that they're around. I think they could be called. In different cultures, they were called angels. They've been called many things. Um, and they've been seen. I think they had a lot to do with setting up the pyramids and a lot of these uh, marvels of the world. Um, and I agree with Sony. You know, we can't be so arrogant that we don't believe that there are other beings besides us. You know, I think they come down and visit all the time. Well, if you look at at the um, hieroglyphics, I, I can't remember whose book, um, Campbell's, somebody. Uh, Joseph Campbell? Yeah, I, th I think it was one, one of his books when um, that, I, that he talked about the, um, if you go into the pyramids and the hieroglyphics that are on the walls, there, there, there are spaceships. Mm -hmm. There, there are you know, figures that come down there. So, so something was going on back, even back then. 
because they, they found the paintings and stuff on walls and caves. So. Even in biblical times, there were paintings with the Elijah and there's a spaceship up in the back. You know, but these were actual paintings. Um, and he talks about, uh, Elijah talks about going up in the chariot, in the mm -hmm. chariot, the chariot with the fire. And, you know, what is a chariot with fire? You know, it's a spaceship. Or you know? it's my blow dryer. Yeah. <laughs> it's your blow dryer. <laughs> I started watching something interesting. It was, I watch a lot of documentaries and something about a prophet that I never knew much about, Rael, R-A-E-L. And he was all about the aliens. He was the alien, they called him the alien prophet. And this is, it was very big in Europe in like the, I want to say the 60s, 70s. And I didn't get to watch the whole thing yet. So, but he was wanted to build this whole welcome place for the aliens when they came in 2035. <laughs> They're coming in 2035. And he called them the El, El, El Hohem which is, I'm not saying it right, but in Israel, what do they call God? El, El, Elohim, Elohim. And this is what he called the the um, aliens. He, wait, no one's heard that term before? No, please, please text me all this, but they're not coming until 2035? Well, this is according to this Rael, R-A-E-L was his name. And I just turned this on last night. It's on, I believe it's on Netflix. It's called, it's called The Alien, The Alien Prophet. Oh, I gotta watch this. Oh my God. I'm really So I need to put it on again. It's it's a like one of those mini series. And um I started watching it. I think I got through the first one and then I fell asleep because I was watching it in bed late last night. Um but check it out. It's really interesting. Now, I don't know if he winds up being, you know, dissed in the end, but he still has people who still follow him. There are still people who still are following his teachings. Oh, my God. I can't, like, if, if I have to wait till 2035 for the damn aliens to come, I'm going to get really pissed. You know, for a while, I was waiting for the third gender to show up. And what I meant by that was aliens, because I was not doing well with humans. So I, I really don't want to wait that long. Like I might die before that. Like I'm totally fine with death. It's the living that's freaking me out. But like, I really, I really want the aliens to come on Thursday <laughs> last week. <laughs> you, you know that they, they just discovered, I don't think it was, was the Chinese. They just discovered another planet, Sagittarius A, I think they call it. Was oh. that was that the dark home? Uh, but they they discovered a planet. It's way out in in the um, it's out there uh, that it has the right temperatures and stuff that they could actually sustain life. The, yeah, something I just saw it in the news yesterday. Oh my God, that's amazing! Yeah, so you know, who knows? They may come sooner. But they're, they're not going to show up. It would be stupid to show up before we're ready to, to handle them. Yes. Yeah. Okay, we have to be advanced. Anybody who's advanced enough to do that kind of space travel uh, has probably been watching us for a long, long time. And and we're we're pretty primitive, uh, <laughs> you know, compared to, to, to what, what they're doing. Uh, and uh, so they... they They've been watching us. I had a client that swears that he was taken up on a, a spaceship. And that they're, I'm, I'm not quite sure that, that he he's he might have a duck out of the, out of the row, but uh, he, he, he swears that he was, was taken up on, uh, on a spaceship and, and used to be experiments with. And that's exactly what we do. Mm -hmm. What do you mean? Well, what do we do? Well, we if, if we were, were happen to you know find ET out there, 
we stick them in a laboratory someplace and stick them full of pins and and all that kind of stuff. But we do it with animals and insects and plants and all yeah. uh, all kinds of living things. Yeah. And are they yeah. not? I mean, I think of the plant plants as have, being their own universe and insects as being their own universe and animals being their own universes. And so if you think of them in that category, like we're just these great big giants that, you know, run around stomping on, on ants and, and whatnot, but they have their own civilization within their little armies and, and they little to us, but they're not to them. And, you know, so we do the same thing. We go out, we, we experiment with insects and plants and, and um, so what is the difference? You're just, if we, if we pictured ourselves in this form as being the ants that we are on this little tiny little planet in this big humongous universe, I mean, that's what we are, like what, what a little ant hill is to us. You know, it's sort of a... They um, may not even notice us because, you know, we're, we're so big compared right. to them. There, there might be something walking out there that that's always been there, but we don't notice it because we're the size of an ant. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah, I was going to say, Caroline, you don't know. You didn't go in a spaceship last week. You got to drink more wine, Caroline. <laughs> <laughs> I I do know, though, I had a friend. Uh, and it happens that uh, Catherine met her. That talked about she had a visitor in her house and went through ex explicit details about how this person showed up in their house and had conversations. A person? Well, uh, alien. Yeah, there's a difference between a robber and an alien. <laughs> yeah, it was an alien. Oh. Yeah, he had, he had a hood. He had a hood. She said he had a hood on and all this other stuff. Could have been a robber. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, is that? No, because she wasn't scared. She had a conversation with him. Did he take her stuff during the conversation? <laughs> Not that I know, because afterwards she, you know, you know, I mean, she told every fucking detail. Wait, yeah. hey, I want to know the details, but hang on one second. I'm going to pause one second. Have fun, babe. Okay, you guys. I want to hear that story. I know you guys do. So you guys got to stay tuned for part two of this, which is coming out soon. Um, so love you guys. And I hope you guys enjoyed us. And uh, it'll just get better and better. And I love these people are my soul group. Namaste, everybody. Namaste to you.